Hi everybody, it's me, Robo, and my wife Mona. Hi everybody. <laughs> Remember you keep that you keep that over there. <laughs> Can you see it? No. Alright then. Wouldn't you like to know what we're talking about? It's none of your business. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Oh, I guess I did make that sound a little dirty and awkward. It's something else. It's something boring. Boring. Work-related. Boring. Anyway. We have here. This was a sale that... It was ironic because we showed up next door, right? We got the address to the next next door. Was that how it worked, Mona? We followed um, some Craigslist ad or something, and we found this one garage sale. And we didn't buy anything there, did we? No. And so we were like, well, we're here. It looks like these guys have something going on, like they're piggybacking, because that's really common. I don't know if that's common in your area. I call it piggybacking. It's like when one person has said, tells their neighbor, I'm going to have a sale on Saturday. And that neighbor's like, hmm, people are going to come. They're going to advertise. I'll just put my stuff out and I'll sell stuff too without any effort but putting some shit out. Piggybacking. So we went to the piggyback sale and we struck gold. We have not told it to that. Wait till I explain to you what we got. It's amazing. Um, we spent $170 over a two-day period because we went back. We went and then we sat and laid in bed together and we we're like, oh my God, that was so amazing. She's like, I know. And I'm like, what if there's more? And she goes, I know. Or maybe that was you who said that. And then we, we played with the idea for the whole half of the next day about whether we'd go back or not. We ended up deciding to go back on Sunday after we'd been there Saturday. And we actually hauled out more by weight on Sunday than we did on Saturday. What am I talking about? Well, we spent $170 on everything I'm going to show you, plus six banker's boxes full of books. Uh, some are thin, some are big, some are more supplemental in nature. What kind of books? Well, we got a handful of things like one about magic mushrooms. Um, we got a few that were art, the big art books, you know. But I would say the majority of them, the majority of the 125, 240, again, I don't have a total count on this. They are photography books for those who enjoy photographing the female form, admiring the female form looking at the female form, doing different things with the female form. I'm making this sound really bad, huh? And also glamour photography and then portraiture and then nudes, 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 and more nudes. We have a book of nude photos from the 1920s. We have one from the, the 1930s. These are like re reproduction things. We have a few that I have researched that are quite hard to find that we are finding listing and selling like 100% sell through rate. At hundreds of dollars on like um, auction sites and that kind of thing. We did get some supplemental pay Playboy material. Hmm? Fire? No. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nothing. The, I didn't know what that was. She's making she's making symbols at me off screen. I'm just like, huh? Hmm? That symbol. Yeah. So now she's doing this. Like, stop talking about. It. I know that one. Anyway, you guys, it was interesting because we didn't go out to find that stuff. But then it was really kind of funny because it was an estate sale for this gentleman's brother. That was not funny. Let me clarify. But when they realized we picked up a few of the books that were outside of the cargo container, um, one of them went inside the cargo container and brought out some that were specifically lesbian in nature. And again, we're not talking soft form. We're not talking that kind of stuff. Um, we're just talking... Some of it's beautiful fine art and some of it is just... You, you can tell it was just a guy, a creepy guy who wanted to look at naked women. Anyway, 126 to 140... 125 to 140 books worth. We have six bankers boxes upstairs filled with them. We haven't listed any yet because we want to start with the ones that are the most valuable probably and work our way down. That way we can load up what's left. Um, but that was not all that we got. Before we got into all those different kinds of books that we saw, I walked up on this trailer, like the kind that you hook up, you know, flatbed trailer kind of thing. And there were all these t-shirts laid out so you could see the design. Now, I knew that they were Harley. I knew that they were Sturgis. I was hoping. It was so funny. I was like, maybe I'll finally have a 3D emblem. Yeah, that's right. As far as I know, I do not have a 3D emblem Harley Davidson or other type of 3D emblem tag yet. We might have one or two in the beginning that we've tucked away and that are way tucked away. And we won't know until we get to them. But 
there were 15 of them. And I said, how much are your shirts? And he goes, oh, they're $2 each. And I said, well, I said, how much would it be if I bought them all? He goes, you'd want them all. And I said, well, I just have to check and make sure they don't have dry rot. And I explained to him what that was. And he's like, are they good? And I said, yes, they are good. How much? And he goes, 30. And I said, that's $2 a piece. He goes, yeah. And I said, I asked you if you'd give me a deal. And so he goes, well, if you could pay me today, I'll take 25. And so I am going to show you the 25 shirts. I'm going to start with the shirts over this. Actually, this is a little extra bonus. This was kind of like a throw and add in, right? It's all part of the 170. Right. I know. Spent. I know. He kind of just threw this in as an afterthought along with a few other things. But um, let's see. I love that. I love the distressing on this. Now, if you're not a distressed clothing nerd, you probably can't appreciate this. If you are, then I'm sure you. What the heck did they actually do here? They hooked them wrong. Hold on. Because I want to be able to show this off for sure. Ah, if it doesn't take me forever. Okay. I don't like when they cross them, but I know sometimes they cross them if they're trying to, like, shorten them, right? It makes them shorter, the length shorter, if you're shorter in the body. It's never been my my problem. But apparently it is a problem for some. Ah, shoot. Okay. I just did it again. Anyway. I don't know if you can see this. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love the distressing. It's hanging on there by a thread. This is the sort of thing that the kids actually love. What? There's a bug. A bug where? There's overalls. Right in front of you on the overall. Oh. Ah! Ah! Oh my god. Don't laugh at me. You're probably laughing too. She thinks there's nothing funnier than... Oh. Maybe that's how I got the ant bite. I, I'm pretty sure I got an ant bite the last time I did a video. And I'm like, hmm. But this stuff is outside. So these are walls. These are made in the USA. We're pretty sure. They're pretty faded all the hell. They're a nice size. Nice, faded, well-worn in workwear. Those, well, you know what, actually? Those should have probably been sucked with the other carts and stuff. Sorry, David, that's okay. Those aren't as dirty as the, the other ones. The carts are in, this, in the thing now? Mm-hmm. Can we put them in there? Sure. Okay. Yeah, if you want to throw those in, just kind of move them around. Make sure you wash your hands because the oxy can eat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, my wife informed me that we did, in fact, get a 3D emblem. And this is what they look like when they... I, I don't think this is what they look like with uh, Harley Davidson, right? They have a different look. Harley Davidson 3D. But this is what they look like this way. This tag will bring you more money than other tags. Um, this one is for Sturgis. It is, I'm looking to see, manufactured by CMJ Marketing, Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, 19, it looks like 1993. I'm not sure if that's right. 93, 99, either way, it's vintage. Um, it is Sturgis, 1994. Yeah, it was 1993 because it's Sturgis, 1994. There's the front hits. And I don't know if you can see the all over print on there as well. That is actually slip screened on there. That is not fabric that has just been printed and inked that way. So this is going for... There's some people that have it undervalued. But right now, if somebody has it in our size, which is extra large, for $124.99, I feel that's an undervalue. This is one that we will definitely sit on. Look, basically, I got it for what... You took off 20%, so what is that? That's... I paid $1.60 for this, tax-free. And you say, amazing. Black Hills Rally, 1994. So that one is pretty awesome. These are going to need a nice, good, long soak. I really haven't looked at these. Um, I just grabbed them, put them all in the bag. I just wanted to pay them as 25 and be done with it. Um, obviously, if that's, let's just say that's worth 125 Right now, we're already almost paid off our whole amount that we paid for all those banker's boxes of books upstairs and whatnot. So... Then we have this one. It's a Laughlin River Run uh, Dalcon Promotions USA. It's a 5XL. It's Laughlin 2003 River Run 21st Anniversary. So it is like, you know, Harley Davidson one, but it's not. And the nice thing is that this isn't a nice larger size. So that one is going to be vintage next year. So basically, I'm going to call that vintage because by the time I put it up, it's going to be vintage. There are in a variety of sizes here. That's interesting. Okay, Harley Davidson. Uh, this one is Harley Davidson Motorcycles. It's a nice color, full moon going on there. And it says Hurricane Harley Davidson, New Orleans, Louisiana. So this is pretty cool. 
This one's a nice one. Yeah, it's got a nice graphic. It does have a nice graphic. I haven't seen this graphic before. Now, I haven't been looking at New Orleans ones, but we I know we don't have this one yet. This is a new one to me. So, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This one here, it's got a lot of crazing on it. It's a jerseys. It's a 3X in jerseys, which is kind of unusual, y'all, because this is the jerseys made in USA. They didn't do past um, 2X a lot of the time on a lot of runs. Um, it was specific to the crowd, you know, if their demographic was larger in size. Because you have to remember, 2X might be the standard for the American adult. With those of us being bigger and those of us being smaller, averaging out to 2X, which I'm representing the average American here right now, I guess, basically. And back then, the average American was a size large, which is more like a size medium. So this one is great for somebody who wants that vintage goodness that's authentic, that's not repo, like a purist, you know what I mean? Somebody who's into pure vintage. So this is a jersey. So you've, got the, you've got the bald eagle there. He's got crackling, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. And then we got just another little hit here just for fun. We got the same guy right there. So they still screened it twice. Very nice. There's that one. Then we picked this one up. This is a jerseys, also a 3X, that harder to find older vintage size. So I'm very happy and pleased with this. Uh, this was also made in the USA. It says, waiting for the perfect woman. And uh, apparently he's been waiting his whole life and then some. <laughs> it's like a crusty old biker sentiment, huh? There's no good women out there. This was part of this? Yeah. Oh, okay. My wife managed to find an outlaw Western wear. It's a 1X. Nice. And it's made in China, so it's not anything especially huge. But it's a 1X, and so it's a women's cut, which is nice. So those are some nice colors. I'll have to try that on. <laughs> Cowgirl shirt. <laughs> All right. This one I was super excited about. The guy even told me, was this the one that he said? No, there was one that he said there was a little tear or something. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I mean, he was really cool, really honest. I'm like, no, I see it. It's fine. So we just put them all in there. I'm, the, all these shirts, the, the $25 out of the $170, 25 is for the shirts because that was my first negotiation with him. His network is down, but I'm feeling better. All righty. So this is Dilbert Software. Um, it is, I don't have a date on here, but it's made in the USA. Which is awesome and the size tag was taken out torn asunder i would venture to say that's uh probably an extra larger 2x wouldn't you yeah but my wife has an affinity that for could Dilbert. possibly be even a 3x it could be it looks like it's uh it's an older cotton you know how those shrunk up a little bit all right more eagle stuff guys this one is a gildan uh it's made in honduras let me check something out here yeah Okay, so you got the eagle, screaming eagle coming in there, and it says, uh, killer, killer machine. Okay. So this one is not, oh, it's the Iron Cross and everything. Interesting. So here's a nice biker shirt, I guess I would call it, right? Yeah. It's kind of like, kind of like a veteran biker. Yeah. I feel like that's the type of dude that would have worn that. Okay, Survivors. The Harley Davidson Motor Company. Um, wow. This is also a 3D emblem. Oh, nice. I didn't see it. See it? I'll, I'll show you guys the difference. Do you see this? It's like murdered out. It's like black on black. I don't know if you guys can really see that. But it's got the 3D emblem printed there. So this is our second. We didn't have any as far as we know. And now we have two. We have two. And this was a lot of t-shirts for 20 so it's a well-worn one. I thought it might be. That's why I double-checked because there we go. Harley Davidson of Tacoma, Washington. This is an old one. You know what? I bet there's some local yokels around here that would love to have that one that collect Harley Davidson shirts from Tacoma and whatnot. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. I've never seen one of these either. This one's all crud. This has had some wear and tear on it. This is a 3XL. This is nice. This, these are larger sizes, which, you know, I think is pretty cool. This is a 19, it's either 1999 or 1989. Mm. It's a V twin fat boy. So they're advertising specifically. There we go. And it's House of Harley Davidson in Anchorage, Alaska. You can tell this one was, look at the, 
Look at the bear over the mountain. There's a lot of interesting detail in this one. It's a nice big size and it's not single stitch. I was looking. So I'm like, is that a single stitch? <laughs> Aren't these shirts amazing? I'm literally seeing them mostly for the first time. I was mostly interested in getting them in a bag, smashing that bag down so he felt like he didn't need to ask for more than 25 because we were still on the premises looking at other things. It's like, I almost wanted to take them out to the car, but then I was like, well, it's all good. It's all good. There's nobody else there. It wasn't like we had to really worry or anything. But this one, I can't even read the tag. It looks like it may have been a Jersey's tag or something. 75th Anniversary Sturgis, Black Hills Rally 2015. There's the back of it. This one smells just like motor oil. These are going to need a good soak too. Actually, I don't know if I'll soak these. I might put them in a in an adjacent one because the ink is real ink, but it's old, real ink, older, mm -hmm. well worn. Waiting for the perfect woman. Oh my God, this is a theme with this dude. <laughs> this is a uh, XXL Haynes Comfort Tea. Look at this one. <laughs> um. This is Edgewater Cycle Shack, and it was in Edgewood, Washington. This man was hard on his shirts, but you got to love the patina and the wash. These, these are some nice older shirts. I don't care about the wear on them for the most part, honestly. I've got a couple of tank tops. I mean, might as well for the whole thing. Um, I believe he threw the tank tops in, if I remember right. Uh, XL. These are, let's see. These are just really old ones. They're really beat. Live free is what it says on the front. And on the back, Tacoma V-Twin, Tacoma, Washington. So these are older. And, uh, oh yeah, that's a single stitch Harley Davidson tank top. Very nice. This one is the, it looks like the same exact thing, just not worn as hard. This one's also, so when we do go to eventually sell these, we could sell two of them, like the Thrash and the regular or whatever, but these are both from the same time period. That one was worn super hard. This one, not so much. This is Northwest uh, Motorcycles, Harley Davidson, Olympia, Washington. It's the same design, basically, but it's not worn to death. So this one, yeah, very nice vintage tee. Like I said, single stitch, so I was excited about that. Hear no Evo. See no Evo. Be no Evo. That's what it says, EVO, okay. XXL. I'm just waiting to see. Uh, shovel heads forever, Tacoma V Twin, Tacoma Washington. Okay, so must have been some sort of a special thing that they did as a group. Um, but that's kind of a cool graphic, and it's yeah. very specific, and I haven't seen it before, so that's interesting. No, I haven't had too many with the Grim Reaper on them either for uh, Harley Davidson. This is on Anvil Tech size three XL. Um, let's see. It says, you just don't mess with freedom. Okay. So there we go. There's another old military one. So that's interesting, yeah? Mm-hmm. Here's that. This one looks really interesting. This was the one I kind of was like, huh? This is a Hanes Heavyweight XXL. U.S. made components. Made in Mexico. And puts this at 95 to 2,000 or so. Um, so here we go. That's a nice full color one. It's Tacoma V-Twin, Tacoma, Washington. Got the same thing on the back, but I think this graphic, I think that graphic is a grail for Harley Davidson, don't you? Yeah. It's old. It is beautiful. <coughs> it reminds me of the way I do my artwork sometimes, building up those colors, the, the opposing colors to make it pop. I really like it. So those were the 25 shirts. Remember, we got six banker boxes of nude photography books. And different things like that. And then we got those shirts and the tank tops. I'm really excited that two of them are 3D emblem. That's yeah. exciting. The one. And, and we have a brother label maker, the one of the big ones with the full amount of keys. Oh, that's right. You've got the I label just maker. Put it upstairs yes. on accident. No, that's fine. I was testing it. So. Totally cool. Now, you guys, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. I remember these from my childhood. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, Lord. You guys remember these little booby cups? They have the, uh, you drink out of this part. Um, <laughs> I reminded my mom that there was a picture of my dad drinking out of these at one point. Uh, 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 Tom and Jerry and 
she was not happy, was she? Mona was present at the table. And I said, my mom wasn't happy I brought that up. And she's like, no, she was not. So I told her I'd seen these. And then Mona looked them up. She was really shocked that I didn't get these, right? And then she looked them up and she goes, oh my gosh, they sell for like 30 bucks a piece. And I was like, oh, and she's like, why didn't you get them? And I'm like, I don't know. I'd already negotiated because I had already negotiated the first day's price, which I believe didn't we agree on 80 bucks for everything. 25 of that was the shirts. And then um, 55 for the rest. So she's like, I said, maybe it was because these are painted different colors. They have different finishes on them. I don't know. They don't really look like they go together. Now that that matters. Um, but this one right here, I don't know. This one's confusing because I guess you're just supposed to, because there's no hole in the nipple. See, that one doesn't have a hole. So we've got these three breasts, three boobs. And these were part of what we got. Like I said, this was an interesting estate slash garage sale. We got we got erotic photography books. Some of them do say erotic photography. Some say glamour, whatever. We got three breasts. We got our first couple of, of uh, what do they call 3D tags, along with some other vintage shirts. What else did we get? Well, let me show you. We got a remote, really? Mm -hmm. My wife will find a remote anyway. So we got the remote. And this one's really nice. We haven't put batteries in it, have we? Mm -mm. We haven't tried it. Try but it. this is made in USA. And it's one where you just put it in there and then... <coughs> <coughs> Something set me off. <coughs> Damn. I picked up something and I smelled some dust smell. We also have some VHS that are sealed upstairs that I didn't bring down. I don't know about how many there were. Uh, there was about 10 to 12. Yeah. We'll just call it 10. Anyway, this is a cool one. She doesn't have this pencil sharpener. If you don't know, my wife collects pencil sharpeners. And then I found some cutesy little stuff. This one was made in Korea. Friendship warms the heart. You know me and my vintage breakable cups. I just can't stop. Um, we found this. This is the second. We found two far side cups in the wild. You realize that for super cheap last weekend, which is crazy, you guys. Why it's crazy is because I decided I wanted to start getting them, like a set of them, just to have them ironically for display. Love Jim Larson and Fire, uh, Far Side. Gary Larson, I'm sorry. Not Jim Larson. Gary Larson. Um, but. I got this one and then I got the other one that I showed you guys in the last haul. So I was super, oh no, 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 I haven't showed that. We just picked that up yesterday. Oops, my mistake. What are these? Are they, oh, these are the, for the black and white film. You guys ever develop black and white film? I don't mean like the digital age. I mean like the old school, school 35 millimeter. I did. I was in yearbook in high school. Uh, I was the yearbook editor my senior year of high school. Um... Yay. Yay me. Okay, is this Jack in the box? Mm -hmm. On a little thing. So, see, I still find the most random stuff. The, oh, Circus Fantasy 87. Is this worth something? I don't know. I was going to check it out. That's Sometimes interesting. those things are. That's interesting. 87. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. I forgot to look. Yeah, that's interesting. We'll have to see. And this says Toro on it. Ooh, that is a well-worn patch. I guess I could wash it up. Um, we have, oh boy. So this one looks very 80s, doesn't it? It's, it hangs, it's an air freshener. It's, it's a air freshener. She's doing the Marilyn Monroe. Ooh, my panties. So glad I wore them today. Otherwise I'd be showing my cheekies. Okay, we got these. These were made in Japan. And I'm going to sell these as a lot of three. Each one is slightly different. I wish there were four, but hey, you know, whatever. So this is them. We got these, and they are really cute. They're not really totally my style, but they are vintage AF, <laughs> and um, I know that vintage is in right now, and stuff made in Japan has regained interest, obviously, lately. So, we got, what is this? I forget what this is. Erasers. Oh, it's a box of old erasers. This probably is worth some money. Obviously, it's old enough that it's in one of these little cardboard things. I'm trying not to throw things around. Got some uh, American Classic 10 Count Man USA pencils. And we got some cassettes 
what I call affectionately 70s butt rock. Not all of it is, but stuff from the 70s that like, came right before I started listening to music. So we got Peter Frampton, um, Honky Chateau, Chateau, Honky Chateau, Chateau, yeah. <laughs> Elton John. I haven't heard of some of these. Some of these might be some really collectible Elton Johns. I have no idea. Queen, A Night at the Opera. Then we have Cindy Lauper. She's so unusual. Yes, girls just want to have fun. Then we have Kiss. Uh, Destroyer. Uh, we have Tumbleweed Connection, Elton John. We have George Harrison, All Things Must Pass. Oh, what is this one? Songs in the Key of Life, Stevie Wonder. <coughs> <coughs> These are dusty. <coughs> Another Ringo Starr. <coughs> we had one of that, remember, with the with little, little Cupid. Yeah, there is definitely something. <coughs> and then Weird Scenes Inside the Gold Mine by the Doors. Obviously, that stuff's a little dusty. Damn. <coughs> That's what you want to see me cough and cough. <coughs> Full disclosure. I'm going to die if I hear that. I have slight asthma. And uh, the dust is sometimes hard for me to deal with. We got eight of these still in the container. These are the 60 minute. And then we got... Oh, TDK, CD Power, 110 minutes. Then we have a 90 minute one here. These are all sealed. And then and one more 110 minute. Yeah, and the 10 VHSs that are upstairs are sealed like that. Right. Unreported. Yeah, so, I mean, we thought this was a pretty um, profitable estate slash garage sale. It said garage sale, but he was selling things that had belonged to his brother. Um, You know... You never know when you're going to find something. And were we looking for nude photography books from the 70s and 80s? No. Was I looking for Harley Davidson? Well, always. I was looking for t-shirts. But to just walk up and see them like that, it was the way he had them displayed. It was the where the, the location of the place. It just worked perfectly for us. Never underestimate the location of something. It did not look like much when we stepped through the fence and went over into their yard from the yard that we had gone to for the advertised garage sale. Never discount piggyback sales. Piggyback garage sales are sometimes the best thing to happen. Because um, they're not super organized. And so the chances are they haven't looked everything up online. They don't know the value. <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to finish up, y'all. Because I feel like I'm going to have to go and... <coughs> Use my inhaler. <laughs> Good lord. Something just got me. It's in the cassettes. I'm going to have to go through and wipe all these off. It's another thing. If you're a reseller and your family acts like you don't work hard. Oh my God. I was taking pictures of the spines of those books and looking up the books for hours, wasn't I? Over the weekend after we got them. Then I spent a couple of hours organizing them as compactly as possible into the banker's boxes. Then, you know, it's like you, you find yourself cleaning the most random things or spending time on certain things. And so it's like, no, nah, we actually worked really hard lugging those books up the stairs. That was my wife. And then me lugging them around the living room before they made their final destination in their appointed box. Um, we will keep you posted on that as far as how those books are selling. It's not like I'm going to do this extravaganza of listing them all. We're probably going to list like, I would say five to ten. We'll do that for a day of listing and see what happens. Just see what happens with it. There's one that the value is so high when it sells. It sells for five five hundred to nine hundred dollars, and that's the one that does the auction houses and it's on Worth Point and that kind of thing. Of course, I can't see because I'm not subscribed to Worth Point because I'm a cheap girl. But I know enough to look around and see that it recently sold for six hundred ninety one dollars and it was imported from out of country, and. It had a disclaimer saying that they it's not in stock and they don't know when or if they will ever have it back in stock. So that tells me that one is going to be worth some money. So that one, uh, we'll tell you the adventures of that listing once we get it listed and see if it sells really fast, if it hangs around, what's going on with it, you know. So on that note, I hope you don't take yourself or life too seriously. Remember to practice your self-care. I hope that all of you 
check out the piggyback sales when you go and you find a sale and there's one down the street and it doesn't look that great and you're like mm, this was one of those sales you guys all the books all the the biker t-shirts all the boobies too these things i haven't seen these things since i was like in sixth or seventh grade i wonder what my mom did with the with the breast cup it was just like that that the guy gave my mom my dad do you think she threw it away or do you think she donated it I think she threw it away. I think she threw it away too. She didn't want to be that lady that donated a booby cup. Me, I'll be that lady that will save the booby cup from the donations for, in the first place. So, if you guys are thrifting, if you're picking, you're checking out the piggyback sales. Good luck, because you know what? There's a lot where you strike out, but every once in a while you don't, and it's so good you can't believe it. We were driving home, and then we're laying in bed before we fell asleep talking about it. And then I woke up this morning, and she's talking about it, and we're talking about it, and we go back, and it was just amazing. So don't be afraid to go back. Assuming you've left the energy of the negotiation on a really good place, this gentleman was really nice. His brother was really nice. They're very helpful loading up the car. It's a lot of books, y'all. We really appreciated that. Um, you know, so we felt really good about going back a second day. So just, just keep that in mind, okay? Just keep it in mind. This, you know... Everything that everybody else discounts, think about it. They all walk past it, so there might be something good. Unless we got there first, in which case we took all the good shit. Sorry. <laughs> all right, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.